A national championship is decided tonight. Montana from the Big Sky and Richmond of the Colonial. The Grizzlies taking on the Spiders, led by two head coaching alums. Will Mike London of Richmond or Bobby Houck of Montana hoist a championship trophy? We find out now. presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. In the football championship subdivision, a true playoff system brings us to Chattanooga tonight. It's Richmond facing Montana with a national title on the line. And for the Grizzlies, it was a road game at number one James Madison last week that put them in the title game. Cole Bergquist threw three second half touchdown passes, the third to Mike Farriner, and Bobby Houck's Grizzlies celebrated. They play for a national title tonight. And here come the Grizzlies. Richmond Spiders were also on the road last week, and they were down two scores to Northern Iowa in the fourth quarter. That's when the comeback began, and the two-minute drill, Eric Ward, was perfect. This pass keeping the drive alive, and then he finds his tight end, Joe Stewart, with 14 seconds to go to complete the comeback, and Richmond is in the championship game for the first time ever. It is electric here in Chattanooga tonight. We're glad that you can be with us. Bob Shoes and alongside Brock Heward. Thanks so much for joining us. And Brock, for Richmond, this is an historic night. One way or the other, this is a school that has never played for a team national championship. Tonight, they get that chance. Incredible. And they are a clutch football team. When you go on the road and you knock off the three-time national champion in Appalachian State, and then you go to Northern Iowa and win in those final 14 seconds, they're a team that's very confident, and they're centered around their quarterback. And that's redshirt junior Eric Ward. He's a very composed guy. Mike London, their head coach, said, I love his play because he's steady. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. He's six and one in the playoffs, and he's going to be going for that elusive national championship tonight. Well, you mentioned confidence and composure. That's what we saw last week at James Madison out of this Montana team. They go on the road against the number one team in America, and they were as solid as could be. And you'd expect a team from Montana to be rough and tough and battle tested. That's what they are. 11 times in a row they've won their conference, the Big Sky. They've been in this dance 16 times. They've been in this title game six times. And when you have a quarterback like Cole Burquist, a red shirt senior, he's played a lot of football. And last week he was flawless. Three touchdowns, no interceptions, nine to 10 in the second half. And he too would love nothing better than to end his Grizzly career hoisting that trophy tonight it's Montana and Richmond all that's left 60 minutes of football to crown a champion the FCS title game is next and then there were two a tournament that began with 16 teams now only Montana and Richmond remain a 16 game season comes down to tonight one chance for glory one shot at history Either Mike London Spiders or Bobby House Grizzlies will be crowned tonight. Bob Schusen and Brock Heward back at Finley Stadium here in Chattanooga, just about set for the national championship game. And unlike much of the rest of the country, Brock, we've got great conditions tonight. It's 64 degrees. And Mike London, what a first year he's had as the head coach of Richmond. What a story. And a first-year offensive coordinator. And he inherited a great football team that was in the semifinals last year. But this team has sure responded to his leadership, much like the Grizzlies have to Bobby Houck. 
And how about the temperatures as they practiced in Missoula this last week? Minus 20 degrees. So 64, a balmy night for the folks from Montana. The Grizzlies won the toss and deferred to the second half, so Richmond will start the championship game with the football. And both sidelines have packed their respective fan sections. There are tons of fans from both schools here, and they're all on their feet. A great atmosphere for a national championship game. Brody McKnight sends it high and somewhat short. Trey Gray from about the 14-yard line. He is walloped at about the 34-yard line. So our first opportunity to see Eric Ward, and he was flawless, needing two touchdowns in the fourth quarter last week to come from behind on the road at Northern Iowa. And he started a drive with about a minute and 45 on the clock and no timeouts, needing a touchdown to win. And watching the tape of that game, I don't know if I've seen many NFL quarterbacks that managed the clock and was more composed than we saw Eric Ward last week. Smart, efficient, you'd expect that from a guy that's going to be starting his 40th game tonight. A lot of veteran leadership from the quarterback position. On first down to his workhorse, Josh Vaughn. And Vaughn moves the pile all the way out to about the 42-yard line for a gain of eight yards on first down. And you'll see the starting lineups for both the Richmond offense and this Montana defense at the top of your screen. Vaughn, number 32 in blue, in his last 10 games has run for just under 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns. Goes to the fullback throw on second down and two. And that looks to be good for a first down. Let's take a look at the Spiders impact players. And you saw Josh Vaughn on that first carry, 235 pounds. I saw him on the field earlier, enormous legs. He drives those legs for over 1,700 yards this season. Defensively, they've got a studded defensive end. Lawrence Sidbury, a very bright guy, great pad leverage, great athlete at the defensive end. And Justin Rogers, he's a star defensive back, seven interceptions. He's also scored three touchdowns and very dangerous in the special teams games. Ward will spread things out on first and ten at his own 45-yard line. A four-man rush comes, and it's a quick out and a drop by Kevin Grayson. Uh, Grayson is the playmaker for this Richmond offense, at least on the perimeter. But he was banged up last week as he hurt his hamstring, and they were wondering how explosive he was going to be tonight. And he warmed up. I watched him carefully in warm-ups, and he was ready to go. And there he just simply felt that outside defender, the cornerback there, Keith Thompson. He felt the force defender, took his eyes off that football. And that's exactly what his position's coach is saying. Secure the football first. But I think right away you see the strength of Richmond. The strength is their run game, their big fullback, their big tailback. They're okay throwing the ball, but they'd like to pound the rock tonight. And the pitch to Vaughn on second down and 10. He's got a crease close to a first down into Montana territory. Maybe a yard shy. It'll be third down and one. One of the strengths of Montana defensively is their two interior tackles. Their fifth year seniors, that's where their size is. Defensively, their ends. Their ends, there you see Mike Stadnick a little bit late off the football. Their other end, Jace Palmer, they're about 230 pounds. They're about the size of that big tailback you just saw barreling down on them. That's a key matchup to watch tonight. Who can contain and control the edge of the line of scrimmage? Vaughn is the eye back on third and one. It's a sneak instead by Ward. And he's got the first down. You hear the Red, the Richmond faithful down here excited about these moving the chains early. This is a Richmond team that starts fast. First quarter this season scoring 108 to 40 against their opponents. Mike London, a guy that preaches starting fast, getting off the football. He likes physical, physical football games. Vaughn again, a cutback lane. He's popped 
looked after a gain of three. Keith Thompson came up to make the stop. And, Brock, I know you were talking during the week about the size in the box for both of these defensive units, more for the Richmond linebackers being a little bit smaller than the Montana defensive line, but is that where the game is going to be won or lost tonight? Offensive lines just being bigger and more physical than defensive players in the box? And how many times in championship games do you say that? This is not like the national championship where you're gonna see Florida and Oklahoma winging the football all over the field. You're absolutely right, Bob. This is a game with some throwback football teams, a fullback, a heavy tailback. The line of scrimmage play will be pivotal in the outcome tonight. Play action on second and seven for Ward. He scrambles and goes down. A loss of eight back to the 49-yard line. Colt Anderson gets the sack. going to see Colt weave his way through that line of scrimmage. One of the most active safeties in all of college football. He's had over 300 career tackles. He's a three-time Big Sky All-Leaguer. He was your offensive coordinator for Richmond. Mike Farragalli was very concerned about. He was active. He pops up on film. And early in this first drive, making his force known. Ward under pressure again on third and long. He'll try and run for it. Takes a hit, breaks a tackle. First down, Richmond. An 18-yard scramble on third and 15. Tyler Corwin and Colt Anderson both combined to miss the tackle. That is the X factor tonight. Both sides, Montana, Richmond, told us this week, if there's one guy that could really impact this football game, not just with his arm, but with his feet, it's going to be Eric Ward. And in particular, it's going to be on third down, where he has a great feel for what defense is trying to do within their coverage and their scheme. If he sees zone, he's going to be patient, he's going to find a crease, and he's going to hit that first down. Vaughn going nowhere on first down. They have lost a yard. Tyler Corwin, the first man there for the Grizzlies. Much better job there securing that edge with their linebacker play. I think that's one thing that Craig Paulson, defensive coordinator for Montana, is going to have to do tonight. He's going to have to run blitz occasionally on early downs. He's going to be careful about it. He doesn't want to give up that huge crease. But there are times, especially on the edge with their outside linebackers, watch tonight Tyler Corwin and Brandon Fisher and how active they are on the edge of that line of scrimmage. Tenth play of the opening drive. His feet moving, again moves the pile. He is a powerful runner. Down to the 23-yard line, about three yards shy of the first down. It's going to be very difficult tonight for Montana to knock him backwards, and you see a very nice job by the left guard there, Matthew McCracken, a third-team All-American last year, a two-time All-CAA left guard, very athletic for six foot four and 290 pounds. He does a nice job of getting his big body in front of Josh Vaughn, and he's got those legs churning forward. Third down and a long two, close to three. John Crone, the fullback, wants to throw it back to the quarterback. It's complete. Ward will walk into the end zone with a Richmond touchdown. National championship football game is available on ESPN2 in high definition on ESPN2 HD. Bob Schusen and Brock Ewart here in Chattanooga. And for the second week in a row, Richmond scores their first touchdown on a trick play. 
Their first touchdown against Northern Iowa last week was off a flea flicker. This time it's a throwback touchdown pass from the fullback, John Crone, to the quarterback, Eric Ward. And there's a look at number 11. The trick play works, and it's 7 0. And it really felt like coming into this game, third downs would be critical on both sides. And three for three on that opening drive. And you're right, a little creativity once in a while can help open it up. And John Crone, the big fullback, with a great throw on the touchdown. Mark Mariani from about the goal line for Montana. And the Grizzlies will start at about their own 15 yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. And keep an eye on the safety here. That's going to be Shea and Schillinger. It's going to be his job to not lose leverage on that half of the field. Eric Ward with the pitch to a fullback. And John Crone in 2006 played for the Richmond Spider baseball team. And there he shows off that arm with a terrific throw. The fifth year senior, one of the captains for the Spiders. There he's, yeah, there he's showing it. That's the form. <laughs> and it was even a spiral, he says. In the national stage, fabulous way to start a football game for Richmond. First offensive play of the game for the Grizzlies at their own 15 yard line. Reynolds has a crease. And just about broke out of the pile. As it was, picked up nine yards. Derek Hatcher brought him down at the 24-yard line. And speaking of the national stage, we saw Paul Berquist play on the national stage last week against number one James Madison on the road. And it would be hard to imagine a quarterback playing much better than he did in the second half of that game. And look at the 28-7 to touchdown to interception ratio. That will tell you about the decision-making of a veteran quarterback. What else will tell you about a quarterback? 31-5 and in his three years as a starter in Missoula. Have we got ourselves some football in the first seven minutes of this game? Wow, what a catch by Mark Mariani. The speed down the field, he is their explosive threat. Cole Burke was plenty of time. You won't see a better catch at any level of football. Look at him extend the body, the body control, the strength in the hands to get those arms underneath. If you haven't watched FCS football this season, you're seeing in fine form the level of play early tonight. Back to the ground, Reynolds. Does well to pick up a yard. Looked like he was about to lose a few. Now the Montana impact player. You just saw him hammer that ball in, and you're right, Chase Reynolds, physical. He shows up to walkthroughs and Wranglers. He's a small town Montana kid, but very aggressive. We saw Colt Anderson with the sack earlier. 305 career tackles, very active at the safety position. And how about that? They help us out. Mark Mariani, the enormous catch to start this game. You see his impact early. Watch him on punt returns. He's got two touchdowns this season. Some running room inside the 25 down close to the 23 yard line a gain of six and let's take a look at Brock's chalk talk the keys for both teams tonight your favorite segment of the show anytime I can hear you educate me this is as good as it gets you're gonna want a balanced attack if you're Montana you're seeing it early the mix of run and pass you've got to find a way to win on third down you didn't do it defensively you're gonna have your first chance offensively with the next play in Richmond forced turnovers they're small they're undersized they've got to find a way that's been there what their strength this season, forcing turnovers. They've also do, got to do what they did early, score touchdowns when you get into the red zone. Four keys to the game tonight. Third and four, Bergquist out of the shotgun. And there's some pressure. Tries to turn the corner and gets walloped at the 21-yard line, a yard shy of the first down. Eric McBride made the stop, so decision time for Bobby Houck. Just outside the 20-yard line, fourth down in a solid yard. And you see Lawrence Sidbury and Sherman Logan, two veteran defensive ends for Richmond, a fifth year and a six-year player. Push that pocket. Cole does a nice job of stepping up. He's actually limping out there right now. He took that helmet right to the thigh. But a very active. 
active defensive line. They're undersized at linebacker, but these two ends tonight, you're going to see two of the very best in FCS football push this pocket tonight. No hesitation for how They're going for it on fourth and one. Reynolds has the first down, pounds his way down to about the 16-yard line. It's a big offensive line for Montana, and we saw the push there. And what really jumps out, not just the weight, but look at the height, six foot eight, six foot seven, six foot seven. Three transfers from Division I schools, Oregon, Arizona State, J.D. Quinn, the center, a starter for Oklahoma as a redshirt freshman. Very physical crew up front. Rick was changing the play. Ten on the play clock, plenty of time to get the snap off. Reynolds comes to the near side, has a crease. Very close to another Montana first down to the seven yard line. Watch your left tackle here, Levi, Levi Horn. Six foot seven, 305. You talked about how big they were. Look how athletic they are. Look at Levi control. Sherman Logan and take him to the ground. The strength of Montana, Bob, you asked me in the open, the strength begins with those five big boys up front. Cooper Castleberry is the referee, and they are going to review the ruling on the field of whether or not this was a first down run for Chase Reynolds. So I guess they're going to review the spot here. Reynolds needed to get to the seven yard line to pick up a first down. His knee is down from that angle. You obviously cannot tell. They've got the ball actually spotted at about the six. Well, he's well shy of the six yard line. And I think worth noting, Bob, both of these teams last week in their semifinal games had their first taste of replay, instant replay. During the regular season, the football championship subdivision does not use instant replay. When they get into semifinal and championship level games, they do. And last week we saw the impact a number of times in the James Madison Montana game. The re replay played a critical role. Well, look from those replays, although we didn't have a straight sideline down the line shot, as if his knee touched down at about the nine yard line, which would most likely put the ball at about the eight. They have the ball at the six. Right there, maybe the eight or the seven yard line. It's hard to believe that the spot at the six yard line is correct. But how accurate they can be with the spot with those camera angles. I'm not sure. The runner was down at the eight yard line. It will be second down at the eight yard line. So they will back the ball up a couple of yards and although our camera angles weren't straight down the line again. Even from a diagonal angle, you could see that his knee touched down somewhere in the neighborhood of the nine, so the ball being at the eight, that's probably the right call, which makes it second down and one. And look at this, Bob. Look at this clock already. We talked about championship level football. This looks like a Steelers game, doesn't it? A Steelers Ravens game, a Steelers Titans game. Very physical football teams. Very conventional schemes that you see played at the next level. And boy, possessions become a premium in these championship level games, especially when you have units that can run the ball as successfully as these two do tonight. A possession each, just four minutes to go in the first quarter. I believe all of the officials on the officiating crew normally work in the Big 12. And the SEC has provided the replay crew tonight. So. It's BCS conferences providing the FCS, their officiating crews, second down and one inside the 10. Reynolds right up the gut. First down and goal at the five. You know, I'd said earlier one of my points about Richmond scoring touchdowns, but it goes without saying that when Montana gets into this red zone tonight, because of what I said about those possessions, Becoming such a rarity and such a premium, you've got to find a way, especially when your opponent marches down and scores a touchdown first. You want nothing more than to match that on the scoreboard. Ball 
false start on first and goal. This is going to move Montana outside the 10 yard line. All right, by number 72 of the offense, the penalty's five yards, and it's still first down. That'll hurt your red zone touchdown percentage. That's just the left tackle we talked about doing such a great job earlier on the edge, and Levi, Levi Horn just jumps there, antsy to get started. Probably looked like a run play the way he was firing off the London line of scrimmage. Red zone touchdowns allowed this season. First and goal from the 11. Berquist throws it dangerously in the flat. Tyler Palmer tried to climb the ladder to pull it in. That's not the guy you want to pick on if you're Cole Berquist. Down here where that football field condenses. Watch Justin Rogers. He's right there, and he does a nice job with his eyes. Very dangerous pass there by Cole. Justin has seven interceptions this season. He took two back for touchdowns. He took a fumble back for a touchdown, and he blocked a punt. Very athletic corner for the Spiders. Tenth play of the drive now for Montana. Second down and goal. To the ground. Nothing there for Reynolds. Sherman Logan came right down the line of scrimmage, right behind Reynolds, and blew that play up. Very obvious there, eight men around the line of scrimmage. Too many bodies, but not enough blockers there, and here you're going to see the red zone defense. Richmond holding their opponents to 50%. Montana on the other side, 43%. Again, you got to find a way for momentum, for confidence to score those touchdowns, if you could do it in the first quarter, really helps. Third down and goal. Berquist under pressure again. He'll be sacked. Lawrence Sidbury hauls him down. Eight and a half sacks on the season now for Sidbury. He leads the team. He's one of the impact players. They're all making their name known tonight. Great spin move there on Chris Dyke. They say he's going to be a first day pick in the NFL. He's six foot four. He's 265. He's a redshirt senior. And look at the helmet there. That is a product of a lot of head putting there, a lot of scratches on the hardware. And a huge sack here early for the Spiders. So Brody McKnight from 33 yards away to try and put Montana on the board. And he shoved it to the right. No good. It was first and goal at the six for Montana, and they come away with no points. That's a big stop for Richmond early. The Spiders have the seven nothing lead. Shut out on the first offensive drive for Montana. ESPN's College Football is presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. And in part by Jared, the Gallery of Jewelry, with five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. Last night in Chattanooga, congratulations to Appalachian State quarterback Armonte Edwards. He was presented with the Walter Payton Award. He threw for over 2,900 yards and 30 touchdowns this season, ran for over 900 yards and 11 touchdowns, had a spectacular year. It was a close call with the Peyton voting, but Armonte Edwards the winner. Back to the offense goes Ward. He wants a big play and overshoots everyone down the right side. And let's head back to our studios. Bob, Wendy next here in the studio. Thank you. A reminder of what's going on around our family of networks on ESPN. It's the Lakers and Heat. And over on ESPNU, Wake Forest and your Richmond Spiders playing some hoops. Bob? <laughs> All right, Wendy, thanks very much. Here with Brock Heward in Chattanooga. The national championship on the line in the FCS, formerly known as 1AA, between Richmond and Montana. The first drive for Montana, short-circuiting a moment ago. It went 12 plays, took seven and a half minutes, no points. Vaughn for about four yards. It'll be third down and six. And a Division III champion will be crowned tomorrow. Defending champion Wisconsin Whitewater takes on Mount Union in the NCAA championship. It's getting to be a tradition. The fourth year in a row, these two teams have faced off in the title game. 
the NCAA Division III Football Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car tomorrow on ESPN2 at 11 a.m. Eastern. Here comes the blitz on third and six. And Ward to the outside. A yard shy of a first down. Gray made the catch. Keith Thompson was there to make the stop. Maybe a half yard shy of the first down. That's a big tackle for Keith Thompson. You see a little bit of the youth there with Trey Gray. Just a red shirt freshman receiver. Their fastest player offensively. He's got to find a way on third and six to make sure he gets to those sticks and beyond those sticks. Credit for Keith Thompson, the tight coverage there. Montana doesn't back down on that third and six. They played some soft zone. That time they forced the issue, brought the linebackers. Keith Thompson locked up one-on-one, -on -one, making what looks like a critical first third down stop for Montana. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter. Hard to believe there's a decision to be made here for Richmond as the crowd, I think, when they didn't see the punt unit run right out immediately, not putting together how close the clock and play clock were, thought we might be going for it in our own 30-yard line. But we expect to see a Richmond punt when we come back. They scored on their first possession, and the Spiders have a 7-0 lead on the Grizzlies in the national championship game. Welcome back to the NCAA Division I Football Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. They start the second quarter, and will they actually snap the ball? Fourth and one inside their own 30-yard line. Richmond out there, apparently going to go for it. No. No, they're doing a nice job. I like the call, Mike Glennon. You do that, you try to draw them off sides. They do the nice job with the motion oftentimes. When that tight end steps back on that fourth and short, you'd expect the defenders for Montana to be excited, but they're steady, heady football from the Grizzlies. They don't bite, and we're going to see a punt when we come back to Chattanooga. Set now for the second quarter to officially begin. As Richmond has the 7-0 lead over Montana. to receive the punt. And it's a pretty good kick from Brian Radford. Mariani with a fair catch at his own 24-yard line. Ball run. Have a ball down 25 yards line. It's first and 10. Reminder, Capital One Bowl Week kicks off on ESPN tomorrow, first at 11 a.m. Eastern. Butkus Award winner Aaron Curry will take Wake Forest into the Eagle Bank Bowl against Navy. Then at 8 Eastern, 16th ranked BYU taking on Arizona in the Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN tomorrow. They might be playing that one through the snow in Las Vegas. How weird is it to see those wide shots of Las Vegas's main strip with snow over the ground? Baylor up the right sideline as a first down. You think the casinos made more money because people didn't leave? Or do you think they lost money because the folks couldn't get in? What do you what do you think about the snow in Vegas? You got the odds? You got the odds on that? I don't think weather keeps people in the outside offense. the casinos. <laughs> 15 yards and replay first down. A 15-yard penalty called on what must have been an altercation out of bounds on the near sideline as Failer got tangled up with someone on the Richmond bench. It's not a look we saw a lot last week. A look we saw it after the missed field goal. Perplexed is what I would say Bobby Houck is on both his kicker missing a short field goal, and there you see the diving at the knees. When the player's engaged, you can't dive at the ankles. I don't know I'm not sure if that Sherman was Logan was engaged. Yeah, I don't know if that's the call or not. But whatever the call was, first and second and 22, critical error for Montana. They'll trap one to Reynolds. And he's brought down shy of the 15-yard line. A gain of a couple. Colin McConaughey came up and made the stop. <laughs> I guess he does. Does just get the ankle there. 
on the chop block. You just got to be very, very careful about where you stick your helmet That's kind when of a that defender is engaged. Kind of a phantom call. Uh, you got to protect those defenders, though, Bob. You can't risk an ankle or a knee by running back diving down there. Second and 20. Berkquist under pressure. Has to throw it in the ground. Sidbury collapsed the pocket again from the left side. Well, he's an impressive kid, isn't he? A, a mathematics minor, a computer science major. He uses that leverage. And when you play against six foot eight tackles like Chris Dyke, you have an opportunity, if you're athletic enough in your hips and in your knees, to bend. And Lawrence Sidbury at six foot four and 265 pounds, he is just that. The most athletic defender. And when you can rush forward, you can push the pocket in that way, you give yourself a great chance and advantage in coverage. Down and 20. Berkwist again under pressure. He'll tuck it under and run and get what he can. Tripped up at the 21 yard line. A good decision by Cole Berkwist. Again, McConaughey came up and made the stop and at least bought his team some field position to set up the punt. And what you see early, you see Cole Berkwist. We talked about that first drive. He took the shot to the thigh. Bobby Houck, Rob Fennessy and company, they don't want to make a living with Cole Berkwist running the football. He's capable, he can run well enough. But right now, Richmond's controlling the line of scrimmage. They're four defenders. They're, they're two fifth-year defensive ends having their way with Montana. And Lou gets away a low kick. This one returnable for Derek Hatcher. He's already in plus territory. Breaking tackles. Hatcher all the way inside the 35 down to the 34 yard line. George Mercer may have saved a touchdown. Time for a Sports Center right now with Lindy Nix. Bob, thank you very much. Red Sox owner John Henry says his team will not be a factor in the bidding war for free agent Mark Teixeira. The reason? Agent Scott Boris is reportedly looking for a deal in the range of $195 million, a price too steep for the Sox. Syracuse guard Eric Devendorf must perform 40 hours of community service and be reinstated by the university before he can play after hitting a female student in the jaw. Bob? All right, Wendy, thanks very much. That punt netting just 13 yards of field position for Montana. Great field position for Richmond. Play action for Ward. Finds a man down the left sideline. Grayson. Knocked out of bounds just outside the 10 yard line. A gain of 23. And Montana trying to push the issue there after that punt return. Craig Paulson, defensive coordinator, tries to dial up the corner blitz. He brings Andrew Swink from the boundary, but Eric Ward is heady enough. He feels that pressure. And whenever you blitz a corner, there's often soft zones behind it. There you see the two marquee players for Richmond connecting Kevin Grayson, an all league performer. Their touchdown maker, and there you see some of that poise we talked about earlier from Eric Ward. Quarterback draw. Ward to the five. A gain of six yards. Shang Schillinger made the stop for Montana. You see Colt Anderson there. He's going to lay every bit of his five foot ten and 185 pounds onto whatever defender, whether it's 235-pound Josh Vaughn, in that case, very elusive and athletic Eric Ward. He's very sudden in his movements. He's a great hitter. You put on any game film, and you're going to see that long hair flying all over the defensive backfield. Second and four at the five. Vaughn bounces it out to the near side left. Touchdown. With 11 minutes, 29 seconds, Bob, in this second quarter, you see a very excited and animated Mike Lund. I think it's worth noting these Spiders in the last two years, 21 and 1, when they have the lead going into halftime. Point being, when they start fast and they get ahead, they're awfully difficult to come back from behind. It's 
it's 14 nothing spiders on top something you can track all the way back to the 15 yard penalty that killed montana in terms of field position and a drive that starts inside the 35 yard line of the grizzlies ends with a vaughn touchdown FCS championship game presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and it's 14-0 Richmond on top. And NFL on fans top. have seen a rookie this year, Tim Hightower, for the Arizona Cardinals score a lot of touchdowns. Well, Tim Hightower, he has this school record. And Mr. Josh Vaughn on that last touchdown tied Tim Hightower. It's 32nd career rushing touchdown. And that one, you saw a little bit of the speed. Early in that first quarter, you saw the strength. You saw him carrying defenders. You see those legs churning. But that time, he used his patience. He used his presence. He used his explosiveness. It's a dangerous weapon for Richmond. Mariani on the 12. Turn back at the 26-yard line. Tremaine Graham made the stop for the Spiders. And now what does Montana have to do offensively to work their way back in this game? They've got to stay out of those third and extra long situations. You've got to have some of that balance that I talked about earlier. That first drive, they did a wonderful job of it early, of mixing the run and the pass. That's where they're, they can use that size up front to their advantage. When they fall behind, they don't have success on early downs, and they get into those third and long, those second and extra long, to really play into the hands of an undersized, very fast and athletic Richmond defense. for Bergquist on first down, being pursued. Tech spiral down the sideline, knocked away. Derek Hatcher came over and knocked down the pass intended for Mariani. And I don't mind the call, a first down play pass. You're anticipating a lot of defenders up around the line of scrimmage. You see that from Whit Richmond, but you see a great response and reaction here by Derek Hatcher, a converted cornerback before this season when they lost their seniors to graduation at safety last year. He saw it on the punt return. His dad, Billy, would be awfully proud of his boy's quickness and making a play on first down. Reynolds at least creates third and medium with the run up the middle. So instead of third and 10 or third and nine, it'll be more in the neighborhood of third and a long three, maybe four. And you mentioned Billy Hatcher watching his son, I'm sure, tonight. Well, back in 1986, the Astros trailed the Mets 3-2 in the NLCS and 4-3 on the bottom of the 14th when Billy Hatcher launched a solo shot off Jesse Orozco to knock the game at the Astrodome. Eventually, in a 16-inning contest, the Mets would win 7-6 and advance to the World Series. I remember watching every pitch of that game and getting yelled at by my parents all afternoon. Mariani picks up the first down. That game, I want to say, was a Wednesday afternoon game that started at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon and ended at like 8 or 8.30 at night, Eastern time. And mom and dad kept coming in. When are you going to do your homework? When is this game going to be over? When are you finally going to hit the books? Because it's got to end soon, 13th inning, 14th inning, up to the 16th inning. Which also brings to mind the fact that an NLCS game was played at 3 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. Seems like 100 years ago. Receiver hits the Ferreter to the near side. He's out to the 45-yard line, gained a couple of yards. Hatcher there again on the stop. Rush Houston told us yesterday, that's a defensive coordinator for Richmond. He said, our strength defensively is running sideline to sideline. Our, our linebackers came out of meetings this last week. We're really proud that their average weight as a unit was 203 pounds. A 16-week grueling season has worn some of their strength down, but not their speed. They're very active sideline to sideline. Eric missed again a play action fake. Nowhere to go with the football. Has to throw it away down the sideline. Both receivers were cutting from his right to his left. He was forced though to his right. Did not to throw across his body as we take a look at this Richmond defense this season. All the interceptions. Incredible. And then that turnover ratio 
that that creates plus 22 on the year with those 28 interceptions is third in the FCS and capitalizing off of those turnovers 156 third. points they play very sound defensively they're not exotic in their blitz schemes but they play their zone defense well they play as a unit incredibly well together here comes the blitz on third and long. It's picked up. Berquist can't escape. The initial rush was picked up, but eventually Pierre Turner beat his man and got the sack. And I just said the play before, they're not a heavy blitz team, but third and seven, Russ dials it up there. And what Cole Berquist was trying to do and what he had some success last week at James Madison doing was allowing those blitzers to come through because there's a lot of green grass behind those blitzers. But Richmond, a very well-coached defensive football team, stays within their lanes and forces another punt from Montana. And a returnable kick for Hatcher. And he's brought down at the 24-yard line. Already Richmond with a 14 to nothing lead. Eric Ward last week threw for 280 yards, two touchdowns, and ran for one in the win over Northern Iowa. He's engineered two touchdown drives here in the first half tonight, and he's back to work when we come back. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Pontiac. Vote now for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. Well, when I think Chattanooga, Tennessee, I think a trip to the aquarium. And yes, the Tennessee Aquarium, located right downtown, ranked one of America's 10 best in 2008. It's a great little downtown area. Walking distance from the hotels, as you can see just on the horizon there, to Finley Stadium, the site of the Division I National Championship game. Presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and it has been a big first half for Richmond. Montana faithful haven't had much to cheer about yet. Urging on their defense here, it's 14-0 Spiders, and they're back to the offense. And back to the ground, Vaughn has a first down, a gain of nearly 12 yards out to the 37-yard line. We talked in that opening, if there is a mismatch to be created by Richmond, it's using a powerful 240-pound fullback. It's using big, physical senior tight ends. And that bowling ball of a back to, in particular, attack the end and the edge of that line of scrimmage. And there you see, again, another 10, 11, 12-yard gain by the bruiser, Josh Vaughn. Composure in the pocket and finds Crone for a gain of seven yards. He felt the rush, but that little bunny hop forward bought him the time he needed. He does a great job with his fundamentals. That's one thing that jumped out as I watched last week's game against Northern Iowa. There's not a lot of wasted motion. And I think that's the model of efficiency for a quarterback in the pocket. A lot of times you see panic, you'll see some of the happy feet. Eric Ward is very efficient within that pocket. He keeps the ball up, and that allows him to hit these outlets with the quick release to pick up seven yards on first down. On again. Maybe a yard shot. It'll be third down and one. George Mercer and Brandon Fisher on the stop. And a much better job there by Mike Stadnick. You saw number 91. There you see Brandon Fisher, the undersized linebacker. The son of Tennessee Titans coach Jeff Fisher, who's in the crowd tonight. A better job. A lot of pressure on Mike Stadnick and Jace Palmer, those two defensive ends. And when they can get the help from the interior of their defensive line, from Jesse Carlson and Craig Mettler, they have an opportunity to stop that run and create third and one situations. The sneak and a first down. Eric Ward almost backpedaling at the end of the carry. Picked up about two yards. Good push out of the interior line. You see Eric Ward does a nice job. Oftentimes, quarterbacks, for young quarterbacks who are watching on a sneak, you don't just want to get that snap and pop up. 
You want to become like a fullback or running back. You want to get those pads down, those shoulder pads down. Use your leverage, drive your legs. Eric Ward textbook there and converting. Receiver screen to the near side to Mitchell. Picked up four yards. Four times the lead. The Mitchell. The head coach of the Tennessee Titans, as Rock said, is on hand to watch his son Brandon Fisher play. He was at James Madison last week to watch him play on Friday night as well in the semifinals. Signed some autographs. Look at that guy. He was smart enough to bring a Vince Young jersey <laughs> and get it signed. And Brandon Fisher had 10 tackles last week against James Madison. And according to Bobby Houck, has improved exponentially this season as an undersized linebacker. Long on second and six. Breaks a tackle down the sideline. Very late flag thrown in the secondary. And Josh Vaughn looked like Jerome Bettis on that last carry, didn't he? Strong. Looked like the bus running Man, over a strong, strong safety. Cole Anderson, the team leader in tackles, 103 tackles coming into tonight. Got run foul by number 66 of the offense. The penalty's 15 yards, and it's first down. Well, it's still a first down for James Madison, but that robs them of just about all of the yardage that Vaughn just picked up. Michael Silva, the starting right tackle, called for a late hit after the play. Colt Anderson is a very good tackler. You don't make 305 tackles number four all time in Montana history if you're not an exceptional tackler, but he does not want to get in one-on-one -on -one situations with Josh Vaughn barreling down on him. He needs to be the attacker in those situations. Jerome Bettis-esque, I think that's great analysis, Bob. Ward to throw. To the 35-yard line to Trey Gray. That's a pickup of 15. That's right where they were before the penalty. And that is a great example there. You'll get a shot of him of that quick release that I talked about. There's absolutely no wasted movement here after the play fake. Watch him keep the ball up. The ball stays up. And once he plants that foot, that ball is driven out to the curl. If you're coaching quarterbacks, that's what you like to see, that body lean moving forward. But most importantly, great fundamentals and technique. And you said it earlier, the poise in which he plays with, his team feeds off that confidence and composure. Quarterback keeper. And Ward steps out of bounds after a gain of about three. You know, you'd expect every offensive coordinator and, and Mike Farragalli no different for Richmond. And you'd expect them to have their guys back, to say, my guy's the best. You know, yeah, there may be some that can run it. There are some that can throw it within the conference they play. Rodney Landers with James Madison last week. You won't find a better running quarterback in college football. But there you see Mike Farragalli in the cap. He just felt like his guy, Eric Ward, was the complete package. He can run it, as we've seen on third and long. He can throw it. And tonight, he's playing with great anticipation and accuracy within the pocket. And again, as a crease inside the 30, down to about the 27-yard line here. John Crone, the lead blocker, helped pave the way. And Vaughn with a touchdown. And a lot of strong, hard runs so far. And Josh Vaughn, about week six against VMI, was benched. Mike London and staff felt like they weren't getting enough from Josh Vaughn. They put Garrett Wilkins, a true freshman, in to start that game. And since then, Josh Vaughn has done nothing but what you've seen tonight, and that is produce time and time again. Averaging 137 yards per game over his last 10. Third and two, big play here. Vaughn gets the carry. Net at the 
25 yard line and driven back. Sean Lebsock was the first there for Montana, and he looks to be about a foot shy of the first down. That was a great initial push off the left side. That's where you'd expect them to run. Matthew McCracken, their all league performer. Jared Decker, very athletic left tackle. They got a nice surge off the line of scrimmage. But credit Sean Lebsock there. We saw the enormous brace on his elbow. We asked him how healthy is Sean Lebsock. And Bobby Houck and company said about as healthy as you could be after 16 weeks of a very grueling physical season. Fourth down and one. A chance for Montana's defense. Ball has the first down, breaks a tackle and more. Inside the 15 before he's bounced out. You saw John Crone earlier with the touchdown pass. Watch the fullback there in hyperspeed. Oh, and he got away just a little bit on Shan Schillinger. That jersey got pulled just a bit, but in championship football, they typically let him play. Boy, but if you are a Grizzly fan, you're wondering where that flag was. Yes, he's Crone is 5'11 and 240, but you can't get those hands outside. They don't call it though, Bob. It's not a penalty. Ward pumps Wilkins to the end zone. Ooh. Touchdown. Garrett Wilkins, the running back, gets loose down the sideline. true freshman to see playing time this season for Richmond is Garrett Wilkins and the true freshman tailback with his third touchdown this year and it's 21 nothing Richmond on top great throw by Eric Ward Ward is now thrown for a score and caught a score himself Richmond in control Two hundred yards of total offense, 13 first downs and four possessions for Richmond. And on those four possessions, they've scored three touchdowns. Number seven over number five in America. Richmond was an unseeded team coming into this 16 team playoff in the FCS the football championship subdivision, formerly known as Division One AA. They only seed the top four teams and Richmond if they are to win this game tonight, would beat their fourth straight conference champion in these playoffs. They've already beaten three conference champions, and Montana is the Big Sky Conference title holders. And they need to get something going because Richmond has been perfect so far tonight. And they've been perfect in many ways, Bob, because you get to championship game, and it's about the details. And watch the split end here on the bottom of the screen. Watch Trey Gray. He does a great job here with his body positioning, and you see the wheel route behind it by the running back. But watch Trey. Watch his shoulders in particular. He does a fantastic job of looking back at the quarterback, and you'll see the safety react. He wanted a pick play call, but as long as that receiver is looking back towards the quarterback, his shoulders are perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. They're not going to call that. Oftentimes, you'll see guys go into the defender, not look at the quarterback. That referee will throw the flag. Hardquist loses the football. It's scooped up. Michael Ireland with the fumble recovery. And it goes from bad to worse for Montana. Martin Parker got the strip sack. Cole Berquist, that football gets away from him just enough. And you see Martin Parker. You talked about the fundamentals offensively, the attention to detail by the wide receiver. How about the attention to de detail by your defensive tackle to sense a ball security issue by the quarterback, rip at that football. That's why you've created 42 turnovers. Oftentimes, turnovers come in bunches.
But there are other times where there are those details, and that's what Russ Huseman, defensive coordinator, credited Mike London, a first-year head coach. He said Mike London came in this year, and if he did nothing else, what he taught us as a staff defensively was that turnovers can be created. They don't have to just come in bunches. They can be created by detailing your practice. Every day they have a practice session devoted to stripping those footballs, to knowing which sideline to get to. Some of his experience with Al Groh, his year in professional football, taught Mike London that indeed you can teach creating turnovers, and Richmond has excelled in that course this season. The right guard for Montana hurt on the play. It's Aaron Hillsland, and he is limping off. As Berkwist was sacked and lost the ball, he rolled up on the left leg of Hillisland. So one of the starting offensive linemen limps off the field. Bobby Houck's team turns the ball over. Ross Huisman has his team as schooled as can be about taking the ball away. That's their 14th fumble recovery of the season. They are now plus 23 on the year in the turnover ratio. They've only coughed it up 19 times and have taken it away 42 times this year. And the second time they'll start a drive offensively here in the first half inside the 35-yard line of Montana. Ward trying to dump one underneath to Wilkins. And let's check in with Wendy Nix, see what's coming up in halftime. Bob, thank you. I'll be joined by Desmond Howard as we get you set for the start of bowl season. Less than 24 hours now until the advent of Capital One Bowl Week. Desmond will have the teams that absolutely won't lose. And I'll have the latest on free agent Phenom Mark Teixeira. His price tag keeps getting steeper. Bob? Well, the deficit keeps getting steeper for Bobby Hout's team, Wendy, as Montana down three touchdowns. Second down and ten. Ward on a keeper again. Picked up about three. Ward's been a receiver, a thrower, a runner. He is an all-around quarterback. He's poised, isn't he? You, you just see that flow from his body language tonight. You'd expect that a guy that's six and one in the playoffs. He's played a lot of football for Richmond. I think what jumps out more than anything tonight, you saw in the touchdown pass. It's just the accuracy in which he's playing the position tonight. On third and seven. Ward rolls to the sideline. Low throw scooped up. First down, Richmond. Nice catch made by Trey Gray. Staying alive, third down scramble drill. You've got a quarterback that you know can buy some time. And Trey got Guy, just a young guy, a redshirt freshman, but again, well coached by these Richmond Spiders. If the accuracy jumps out to you tonight of Eric Ward, just the attention to detail that this coaching staff has Richmond playing with tonight, awfully impressive. To Vaughn. He's driven back. Forward progress. Picks him up about three yards. And this will take us inside of the final 30 seconds of the first half. Now, Richmond still has two timeouts left. You think they might want to spend one here. And this is a break for Montana that Richmond is allowing the clock to run down as far as it is as they ran new players on the field for this play. And a 13 second. Montana brings a blitz. And now Richmond has to call timeout. Five seconds to go. By not calling timeout after the last play, Brock, it almost renders it irrelevant that they still have one timeout left. They've got five seconds to go. So most likely, it's a one-play scenario. We'll step aside and see what Mike London decides to do on third down. With only five seconds to go now in the first half, Richmond will line up for a field goal. Andrew Howard, 17 of 26 this season, but only two of six in the playoffs. This from 28 yards away. Bad clock management by the Spiders 
to put themselves in this position where they have to try the field goal now. And this one is shoved wide right. There's a little momentum heading into the locker room for Montana. As Brock, they dodge a bullet. They're down three scores, but it could have been worse. And Montana's going to get the ball to start the second half. We talked about it at James Madison last week, how critical going into halftime can be. And conversely, coming out of halftime in Montana, if they're going to get back into this game, they're going to have to do it the first drive starting in the second half. Still in all, a great first half for Mike London's Richmond Spiders. In the national championship game, they lead Montana 21-0 at halftime. Now Wendy Nix in our studios with the halftime report. Welcome back to the NCAA Division I football championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. At halftime, it's all Richmond. They have a 21-0 lead over Montana. Just about set to start the second half here at Finley Stadium in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And a beautiful night. 65 degrees of kickoff, and it hasn't gotten much cooler. It has been red hot all night for the Richmond Spiders. Bob Schuss in here with Brock Hewitt. And Brock, it was through the air. It was on the ground. It was a mixture of players. Vaughn, Ward, they all were effective. Really, everything that Richmond tried turned to gold. It was fundamentals. It was attention to details. It was big plays. You're absolutely right. That is about as picture perfect a first half as Mike London and company could have counted on. And it started early with a little trickery. The fifth year senior fullback, John Crone, back to the quarterback. And here you see some of the strength and power and 235 pounds. And now a record tied all time career touchdown leader. And great precision in the passing game as well. Just the total package in that first half, Bob. 21-0, I think the only complaint you have was the way they finished that first half. They get into the red zone, they come away with the missed field goal. They may breathe just a little bit of life into Montana, who now is going to get a chance to start the second half with the football. Is there ever more of a must drive for an offensive team coming out of the locker room than this is a must for Montana down 21 to nothing? And it really starts on the kickoff. Mark Mariani is an explosive playmaker, but he's had no opportunity in the previous kickoffs. Mariani averaged 24 yards per kick return this season. Here he is from the five. That's a tackle, good field position out to the 36-yard line. And let's take a look now at the Home Depot coaching adjustments. Let's see how Montana's going to get back in this game. And I think one of the adjustments you have to make is up front, and that's a strength for Montana. And when you give up three sacks, and Lawrence Sidbury was a force that entire first half, when you can rush four defenders and you have a stud at the edge like that, like Lawrence Sidbury pushing that pocket, it's going to make any precision in your own passing game awfully difficult. So whether it's chipping on Lawrence Sidbury, whether it's keeping a tight end in, I think if they're going to have balance offensively and really execute in their passing game, they've got to protect first. Although another self-inflicted wound for Montana. Wipe away the good field position. A late flag was thrown, and it was a personal foul against the Grizzlies that will put them back at the 21-yard line. Look at the left side of your screen, and there's the late hit. And an extra little shove by a Richmond player as well that didn't draw a flag, so only the first contact drew the attention of the officials. So instead of starting at the 36, Montana begins the second half at their own 21. Reynolds with a flag coming in late. Sidbury made the stop after about a three-yard gain. We'll have to check the penalty. It was thrown from the secondary back towards the line of scrimmage. That's one other way to slow down a very active defensive end, and that's run right at him. Make him feel a run game, hit him, hit him in the mouth. A, a coaching adjustment right away. Get after Lawrence Sidbury in the run game. Cooper Castleberry making sure before announcing the penalty call. Number 98 of the defense. Yep. A personal foul, hands to the face, number 72 of the offense. Goes offset and replay first down. So defensive holding on a running play balanced off by a personal foul against the offense. Watch the right side 
of your screen, and you can see hands to the face up underneath the yeah, face mask. Really obvious there, and they're going to call 98 Parker Miles. That may have been a comment from the Montana staff coming out of the locker room to the referees to watch the defense of holding a call you don't see very often in college football. And now the officials blow the play dead once again. Watch the right side of your screen. 98, and I guess he's going to grab the center, and that is a good call. That defensive lineman can't reach out and grab that center trying to get to the second level. Not called a lot. Savvy. Again, a well-coached football team. You can get away with that more times than not. But a heads-up officiating crew throws the flag. The offsetting penalties create first and ten. And the officiating crew from the Southland Conference, they also work Big 12 games. And after all of that is said and done, it's first down again. A little flip to Reynolds, and it picks up four yards out to the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Brock's chop talk and some of the adjustments from the first half now for the second half. And I think what you see right away, a balanced attack. There was a mix of, of yardage for Montana, 43 and 54 but not effective enough because you didn't win on third down. Just one of five offensively, and look at Richmond, five of seven, really controlling the game on third down. And Richmond, plus one in turnovers. They scored two out of three times in the red zone. Right now, they lead 21 to zero on the scoreboard, and you're right, Bob, this is an enormous drive for Montana to get something going in this football game. Reynolds. Now to the 31-yard line, maybe a half-yard shot of the first down. So here's a big third down and short for Montana to keep this drive alive. Got to have patience. When you play against a Richmond defense that lines up, they don't do a lot. You don't see a lot of different defensive formations. You see a four-man front. You see eight defenders in the box. You see a lot of zone coverage. Rob Fennessy in Montana has to be patient and take those four and five-yard gains. Those chunks will come and play action if you're patient running the ball. Play action. Bergquist flips it left, cut, left sideline, Bowden, first down, and then some. <laughs> Only the fifth first down of the game for Montana. When you can run the ball a little bit, you give that threat of a run game. You're going to watch the activity up front there for Richmond, accounting for that run game. Good touch by Cole Burquist, a critical third down conversion. Again, just one of five in that first half. You gotta get those chains moving to build some momentum. Burquist leans into a throw and finds Mariani for a first down and a gain of 13 more. And a great example there of what we talked about coming out in the second half, and that's protecting Cole Berquist. He's accurate when you can give him some space in the pocket. That time, Brent Russell and company did a, a fabulous job against Lawrence Sidbury. They rush four. Watch your right tackle here. Brent Russell all league offensive tackle. You give Cole that kind of pocket to throw from, and he's a much different quarterback. Again, Berquist's play action. Wants the ball. Seth Williams step for step with Mariani, who got up looking for a flag. A little bit of a bump at about the five-yard line. Not a lot of contact. Nice coverage. Yeah, I don't think you can throw the flag there. Seth Williams stride for stride. He doesn't bite on the play action. That's good coverage. That is good coverage. And Seth Williams is a major reason that Richmond's in this championship game. Three interceptions of the Walter Payton Award winner on Monty Edwards. A few weeks back when they beat the three-time defending champ Appalachian State. Three big picks from Seth. Reynolds breaks a tackle, spins for about four yards. Michael Ireland made the stop, and another late flag comes in. Do we have a first down? to the play. A personal foul, number 72 of the offense. The 15-yard penalty will be third down. Wow, another personal foul play. That's the third on Montana. Levi Horn called that time. A late hit after the play. And 
Trying to take a shot, Levi Horn, on Lawrence Sidbury. He's taking advantage of him at times tonight. You just got to hear that whistle. You got to be smart. You got to know if they're throwing that flag, they're watching out for that extracurricular activity. And you just can't put yourself in these second and third and long situations. Bergquist running for his life again. Out of bounds back at his own 34 yard line. And that'll be a sack and a loss of about eight yards. Parker Miles ran him out. A little surprise there. The Cole just did not outside the box throw that football away. So that first drive that pushes all the way into plus territory, short circuits with the penalty. Burquist, instead of throwing the ball away there, takes a sack and loses eight more yards. And now it's fourth down and 31. Uncharacteristic. Montana has played a very clean previous three weeks in the playoffs. Not made these critical self-inflicting wounds and errors, penalties, turnovers, sacks. Richmond in complete control of this football game. Another returnable kick, a low kick, and Hatcher was covered well back at about his own 31 yard line. Kevin Claybo came down and made the stop. In the first half, Josh Vaughn kept his streak rolling. In the last 10 games coming into tonight, just under 1,400 yards rushing. He was a load in the first half, and he'll go back to work when we come back. National championship game tonight is available on ESPN2 in high definition. And it has been high performance tonight for Richmond. They have a 21 to nothing lead back to the offense early in the third quarter as Montana short circuited on their last offensive possession to start the second half. And now their defense has to give them a stop. To work with Vaughn. Only a couple of yards out to the 34 yard line. Brandon Fisher helps make the stop. Numbers that have become typical for Josh Vaughn closing in at 100 yards, averaging nearly six yards per carry. A touchdown tonight. His 17th touchdown in his last 10 and a half games. Mike London benched him at least at the start of the VMI game back in week six. And they think that was a turning point for the year that Josh Vaughn has had. Ward finds Vaughn. He steps out of bounds at the 38 yard line, about four yards shy of a first down. And again, that VMI game, Brock, came in week six. In the first five games of the season, Josh Vaughn, who was supposedly and a little bit of an inferiority complex in the shadow of Tim Hightower left. Only had 353 yards and three touchdowns. Look at his production over the last 10 games coming into tonight and what he's added tonight. And I think Mike Farragalli said it best. He said he had to grow into that limelight role. When you have a star like Tim Hightower and you can stand in those shadows, there's a bit of maturity to grow into the star role. And since accepting that responsibility, you're right, he's been nothing but a star. Boy, does he get walloped. A couple of yards shy of the first down, and there is the stop that Montana's defense needed. Colt Anderson came up and delivered the blow. This is pads popping. Responsibility, you're right, he's been nothing but a star. What a prime example, Bob, when I said earlier about him being the attacker. If he's initiating contact, he looks a lot like Troy Palamulu from the Steelers, a guy that comes out of center field, and when he can attack, he's dangerous. A short kick. Mariani lets it bounce, and it somehow hugs the sideline, and then Mariani gets wobbled. And the flag. Just unnecessary for the Richmond players to take a shot at Mariani and as he and waved <laughs> he waved his teammates away from the ball. He also saw Mariani's teammate come in and give him a little pat on the head.
One thing you got to learn as a player, when your teammate gets whacked like that, don't come pat him on the head. <laughs> he's trying to figure out where he's at. <laughs> For an illegal block, no foul. So they pick the flag up. Yeah, there's nothing to, nothing to call there. And if that drive coming out of the half was big, and now there's 23 minutes left in this championship game, if Montana does not get something going now, they're in big trouble. Again under pressure, Berkman. Stickney goes down. Sidbury with the sack back to the five-yard line. They can't block him. And that's the spin move again. That's the second time that Brent Russell, the right tackle, has been beat by that spin move. When you have the strength and you can play with the leverage that Lawrence Sidbury does, you have to respect that. And then when you throw the spin move on top, you start to become, like you said, an unblockable force. Ernest from the end zone. Fires one deep over the middle. Mariani's got it. All the way out to the 46-yard line. What a big play to momentum change for Montana. That's the difference. If you can block, we saw that on the last drive. If you can block this front four, there are plenty of holes and windows within this zone defense for Mark Mariani, Cole Berquist to get into some rhythm. But when Cole is getting hit and Lawrence Sidbury is dominating the line of scrimmage, you can't get into the flow offensively. side by Schulte. Instead, take a wide angle look at the last 40 yard game for Marriott. And you're going to see again the speed. Mark is their fastest player. He's simply going to run to the post. But the key is that right tackle. Brent Russell locks up Sidbury. He does a nice job, does Mariani, of hitting to that corner. A solid route. There is some windows. There are plays to be made. But you got to control the line of scrimmage first. This one right through the hands of Ferreter. It would have been a first down on the far sideline. Boy, a different looking offense, isn't it, Bob? We saw last week this offense play as well as they could play. They executed flawlessly against James Madison. But tonight you're seeing some of those self-inflicted errors of penalties. Now you're seeing some drops. And you're seeing the influence of a very fast, a very aggressive Richmond defense. Montana has not handled very well. Here comes the blitz. Berquist buying time. Wants the big one again. Over the head of Ferrer. And incomplete. There's a couple of flags down. Back in the offensive backfield. That's going to be a hold again on Sidbury. Number 69 in the offense. The penalties decline. Fourth down. I'm a little surprised you haven't seen maybe some movement in the pocket now 0 for 5 is Montana on third and extra long Oftentimes when you get a pass rush and you see zone defense the screen game can be a compliment a shovel pass They've got to do something to move this pocket because right now Lord sidbury has got a bullseye on Colbert was just And they cannot stop him time on one of these punts and this is another bad punt and it takes a little Richmond hop to the 33 yard line a 21 yard putt and now another altercation away from the ball and more flags thrown this is frustration this is a team that's 14 and one in, Mo in Montana well, if this frustration manifests itself into a personal foul against Montana, and let's see what the call is, Richmond could have the ball basically at midfield after a 21-yard punt. The foul number 49, dead ball personal foul number 12, penalty's offset. First down. So it will be Richmond ball at their own 32-yard line when we come back. Midway through the third quarter in the national championship game.
College Football, brought to you by PlayStation 3. A foggy night on the banks of the Tennessee River here at Chattanooga. We're at Finley Stadium, the site of the NCAA Division I National Championship game presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. A little under seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. And back to the offense for Richmond. What a frustrating night it's been for Montana offensively. And they'll pound away with ball. A gain of nearly eight yards. And a Division III champion will be crowned tomorrow as defending champion Wisconsin Whitewater will take on Mount Union in the NCAA championship. These two teams face off in the championship game for the fourth year in a row. The NCAA Division III football championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car tomorrow on ESPN2 at 11 a.m. Eastern. And compared with five Division II consecutive meetings between Bloomsburg and Lock Haven in field hockey and women's lacrosse, see the College of New Jersey and William Smith meeting in the Division III championship game. The Division III football matchup, the most consecutive times we've seen the same matchup in a national championship game. Crone gets the call up the middle, no gain. And it'll be third down and two. Sean Lepsock made the stop for Montana. So again, here's a chance for the Montana defense to force the three and out. You know one thing about championship caliber teams, and you don't get to this game by quitting. You're gonna, you've handled adversity at some point this season. Montana has. And you see a defense, a Bobby Howe defense here that is not quitting, is trying to give their offense a chance. Ball on third and two. He won't get there. Tyler Corwin made the stop. He looks to be a good half yard shy. Maybe a full yard shot. It'll be fourth down. You see Brandon Fisher oh, flying oh, in there. You see Montana selling out to the line of scrimmage right now. And Richmond's playing conservative here. I think you got to be careful. But at the same time, I think Mike London is saying, I don't care. I, the way that we are playing defense, the way that our front four is playing, I'd rather play conservatively, knock off some of these minutes on this clock, get to the fourth quarter, and bring home the first championship in the history. 178 years this university is old. And now they are 19 minutes and 45 seconds away from their first ever championship. While we were away, we saw Andrew Sell warming up on the sideline. There might be a quarterback change coming up for Montana, but Chase Reynolds is the horse. He has been quiet tonight. We'll see if Montana can get their star tailback on track when we come back. Well, maybe a sign of desperation for Bobby Houck's team. Montana is trailing Richmond 21 to nothing here in the national championship game. Cole Berquist is on the sideline, and Andrew Sell, a sophomore, is taking over at quarterback. He's been in six games so far this season, thrown for 314 yards, four touchdowns, and a couple of interceptions, only 42 total attempts on the year. And he'll hand it off to Reynolds on first down. Reynolds breaks a tackle and gets spun back at about the 35-yard line, a gain of four. Michael Ireland made the stop. Berquist has taken a beating tonight, 7 to 15, 130. He's hit some throws down the field. I don't think this is an indictment on Cole as, a, as much as it is trying to create a spark. When you've been shut out through the first two and a half quarters, you've got to find a way to get something going. And at times, a quarterback can't change, can do that to an offense. Sell the throw for the first time. The sideline overshoots Mariani. Incomplete. Cole Burquist has had problems tonight, but most of them have been caused by Lawrence Sidbury. And I think that helmet speaks to the play of Lawrence Sidbury. That helmet, I don't think the equipment manager at, Red, at Richmond particularly likes all those scratches and marks. But Lawrence Sidbury, just a tremendous story. A student athlete. Richmond, an awfully difficult academic institution. He has flourished off the field as much as he has on the field. Sell on third and five, up the seam, and a drop. 
Derek Hatcher was there to provide the blow. But the catch needed to be made. Andrew Sell also got popped as Ferreter dropped the ball. And again, when you sit back there eight yards and you give these two defensive ends a launch point, when you know where that quarterback's going to end up, this defensive line is too good. I think you got to mix it up a little bit. We've got to see more play action pass. You've got to move the pocket. Because right now, whether it's Cole Burquist or in that series, Andrew Sell, these quarterbacks are taking a beating and not getting into any sort of rhythm. Fifth punt for Ken Wood. Another rolling. Returnable. Action. Dodging tacklers. Right across the 35 to about the 37-yard line with another flag down. Labo downfield to make the stop for Montana. See some, see some animation on the sidelines of Richmond as well. Twenty-five of the return team. The penalty is ten yards, and it's a first down. That's a tough call, and you're going to see Mike London. Watch here, the block in the back. It's a little bit cheap. That defender puts his arms up. A lot of flags tonight. This may be the first time I can remember that Richmond has been backed up within their own 20-yard line. Montana's defense a chance to create some field position here for their team. Takes field position right back to Richmond. The big run tripped up. Cole Anderson may have saved the touchdown. You can say great run, which it is, which we've seen a lot of tonight, but in this case, you've got to bring your body. There you see this cornerback, Andrew Swink, the junior college transfer. He wanted nothing to do with Josh Vaughn. He's simply diving at the ankles, not bringing the arms, not bringing the hips. When you play a back like Josh Vaughn, you've got to put your body in front. And these secondary for defenders for Montana, they're getting worn down and tired of the beatdown from Josh Vaughn. Play action now for Ward. Throws it underneath. And a tight end, William Bischoff, comes back to make the catch. Lost a yard. Capital One Bull Week will kick off on ESPN tomorrow, first at 11 a.m. Eastern. You'll see the Butkus Award winner Aaron Curry and Wake Forest take on Navy in the Eagle Bank Bowl. Then at 8 Eastern, 16th ranked BYU beating Arizona in the Pioneer of Las Vegas Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN tomorrow. We've got five games for you over the weekend. That's just two. Also, the New Mexico Bowl tomorrow afternoon following the Eagle Bank Bowl. The Magic Jack St. Petersburg Bowl down in South Florida's backyard. Memphis will come to town and on Sunday night. Southern Miss and Troy will play in New Orleans. Play action. And keeping it as Ward. And he picks up a couple of yards after the 41-yard line. There's a flag down in the secondary. After the play, a personal foul, number 25 of the offense. Penalty is 15 yards, and it's third down. So the down counts, plus you add 15 yards for a personal foul. That is huge for Montana. There's still plenty of time left. They're down three scores. And if they just get a stop on this play, Brock, they will have, you'd have to think, at least respectable field position for their offense. And you remember last week, in the semifinal, Richmond was down 20 to 7. They were down 13 points heading into that fourth quarter. So again, the defense for Montana giving their team a chance. And here you've got to contain the field position. Ward on a rollout. Oh. A low throw to the sideline. It picks up about seven yards. We lost about 25 seconds or so of game clock time. 
As the flag was thrown right at the end of this last play, you can see three minutes on the clock. They made the penalty call with about 2.38 on the clock, which means they allowed the clock to run for 22 seconds with a flag on the field before they finally stopped it. Boy, our truck doesn't miss a thing, do they? The entire time the officials are chatting about the penalty, the game clock ran. For the punt. How did he get it away? And a flag comes out. Mariani will let the ball roll down to the 30-yard line, but this is going to be a free first down for Richmond. Montana looked to have the punt blocked. Sever and Campbell, one of the group in for Montana. That's just a five-yarder, Bob. I think I think you're going to see a five-yard penalty. The referee here asking the sidelines. How in the world did they not block that punt? And I'm shocked this isn't a personal foul then. Normally this is roughing the kicker. Running into the kicker, number 41. The penalty's declined. First down. You see here on the on the replay, nifty job by Montana's special teams of running a little game at the line of scrimmage, creating the free defender to come in. Just overruns the play. Just does not hit that launch point. You talk about the launch point for the quarterback within the pocket. The launch point there is a special team where you got to get to the foot of that punter. You can't anticipate where he's going to be. You got to hit the foot, block that punt, create an enormous play. And again, Montana not taking advantage. And now you see Cole Berkowitz back in the game. So Sell got one series, and they go back to the senior. Berkowitz sets up the screen. Reynolds. Three yards. McConaughey made the stop. Now let's take a look at our Kirk zero game track. A lot of zeros. The Montana offense it averages nearly 34 points a game. And I've been in this situation this season, blanked for the first three quarters. This is why not Richmond you. defensively. I'm not buying it. You, a Brock Heward engineered offense, blank for three quarters? <laughs> Did I say me? No chance. <laughs> Berkowitz finds Mariani for a first down. <laughs> I was just impressed tonight that you were on your game playing hurt in that the pregame buffet opened late and threw your whole schedule off. And somehow you fought through it on your game tonight. I'm impressed. You know, you're trying to get to the meatloaf, aren't you? Well, I had meatloaf that wasn't No, you're good. trying to get to the meatloaf. You're trying to get to the fact <laughs> that I had four pieces of meatloaf. <laughs> and all I heard you say was, this does not even come close to my wife's meatloaf. That's right. Breakfast under pressure. Almost intercepted. Jonathan Ash was there pressure. Well, you can tell by looking at me that I am a connoisseur of meatloaf. <laughs> and nothing compares when I go home. <laughs> With 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. Montana needs to keep this drive alive. It's second down and 10. They have been terrible tonight on third and long, so this is probably as, mu as much of a must play as the third down play might be. Marcus doesn't feel the pressure. He just got it away. Sherman Logan came free on the far side and blindsided Berkowitz. He had no idea he was coming. This is one of the dangers as this game moves along and we get to the fourth quarter and you're down 21. You become one-dimensional. You simply don't have the time now if you're Montana to give that threat of a run game. And when you don't, you make life on your left tackle and your right tackle very, very difficult. There, Levi Horn beat by Sherman Logan, the six-year defensive end who continues to put body blow after body blow on Cole Bergquist. Third down and 10. Mariani reaches out, picks up the first down. A huge play for Montana. And flying in late was Colin Dow, the left guard. And he flew over the top of the pile and actually missed all the Richmond players. And Brock, he came that close to picking up a late flag and a personal foul at the end of that play. He was lucky he missed the Richmond defenders. When 300 pounds comes barreling down at you, 
You heard a sigh and a gasp from the Richmond faithful, but you're absolutely right. Montana, if they're going to get into this game in the fourth quarter, are going to have to be heady. They're going to have to be smart, and you can't have that after the play in which they've already called that play. They've shown you time and again tonight. They're going to call those late plays. And Montana finally get on the board to start the fourth quarter. They're at the Richmond 31-yard line with a first down, trailing by three scores in the Division I Football Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Medical. One championship game presented by Enterprise Rent a Car here on ESPN. No scores at all in the third quarter. Richmond with a 21 to nothing lead and a must for Montana to try to get themselves back in the game. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. Sidbury again. There are no answers for Lawrence Sidbury on that offensive line from Montana. I think you hear a lot of times coaches again pump up their own players, and when they said this guy is going to be a first-round pick or a first-day pick, the scouts come in here and they love his body type, they love his motor, and tonight to a national audience, he is showing the impact that a front-line defensive end can make, and he's been unstoppable. Second and 14, again the pocket starts to collapse. Bergquist being chased by Sidbury, throws it away. So now it's third down and 14. And the other thing I think that has been lost a bit tonight in this game has been the running game for Montana. Reynolds is their go-to guy. He has been tremendous this season, but they have been in so many second down and third down and longs, he's been rendered useless just about. And they're behind 21 to zero. And you fall behind like that, it's awfully difficult to be patient enough to run the football and to be balanced, but I I'm shocked. I, I got to be honest with you. I am really surprised after watching how dominant Montana was last week and how dominant they've been up front this season to see the impact that four defenders have had for Richmond tonight. The shovel pass. Reynolds gets loose. Very close to a first down. He might have it. Justin Rogers tripped him up or he might have gone the distance. And there you see the shovel pass. Again, you saw a screen on the last series. It's a bit of a discombobulated, not how you draw it up, shovel pass, because there's defenders in the way. Sometimes you have to be a little creative with that flip. And Chase Reynolds, a terrific job of understanding where that yard marker is and getting the third and long conversion. Bergquist, this time well protected to the end zone fingertips of Farrader and incomplete. That's one of the first times I can remember tonight. You look at the replay there where you saw some help for Lawrence Sidbury. You see Chase Reynolds that time, the Wrangler man, come in and actually do a nice job because Lawrence Sidbury was once again back in the pocket. Actually, it was the other end, Sherman Logan that time. But Chase Reynolds does a nice job of helping his buddy out. That's that execution. That's it just a foot. It is. It, and, and, and that's the way that Richmond plays defensively. You've got to be precise in your passing game. Montana hasn't been tonight. Again, good protection for Bergquist. Finds Mariani. But check that. Schulte underneath. And he's close to a first down. Maybe a yard shot. He was right on our yellow line. Now let's see if they move the chains. Doesn't look like they will. See a little more poise from Cole Berquist this drive, don't you? Responding on that third and 14. Sometimes that backup quarterback comes in. You get a chance to watch, to sit on the sidelines a little bit. I think reflect on the fact you have 13 minutes left in your Montana career to make a mark. Berquist patiently will keep it. Has the first down. It's first and goal at the eight. 
Michael Ireland came up and made the stop. Looks like they'll mark him down at the nine yard line. So if Montana's going to get themselves back in the game, this is the drive. You gotta be careful about that clock. It's starting to run a little bit. Maybe time to go a little bit up tempo, but these three plays here may very likely decide the outcome of this game. You don't score a touchdown here with 12 minutes to go, your odds really get stacked against you. These four plays. True. Right, this is four down territory. Berquist inside the five yard line. Finds Schulte. It'll be second down and goal. Sidbury was on the sideline for that last play. It looks like he'll be held out once again. Now they get Sidbury back in the game. Pierre Turner loops off. Montana has come away empty across the board tonight offensively. At the goal line, it's Reynolds. He's in. Touchdown. The Grizzlies finally break through. Football Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. The Grizz get on the board. It's 21-7, and they need Santa to bring them a couple of more, and maybe a Richmond turnover at some point, as the Spiders, with 11.56 to go, are that close to their first national championship in any team sport in the history of the school. And it's only a school that's about 175 years old. Only the second time tonight that Montana's kicked off. Knight's kick short down the sideline and it floats out of bounds. Richmond will have the ball at their own 40-yard line. Bobby Houck is also the special teams coach for Montana. The head coach handles the special teams, and that is normally the look on a special teams coach's face after his kicker kicks the ball out of bounds. That's a true freshman, and that's the difference. Bobby Houck's had some veteran kickers around here. They've done an exceptional job in that phase of the game, but tonight you see a true freshman in Brody McKnight on a grand stage, missing a short field goal earlier, a fatal error there, setting up field position. It happens with true freshmen get on this stage at times. A quick out, caught by Grayson. Only a couple of yards. A Division III champion will be crowned tomorrow. Defending champion Wisconsin Whitewater will take on Mount Union in the NCAA championship. These two teams meet in the championship game for the fourth year in a row. The NCAA Division III Football Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car tomorrow on ESPN2 at 11 a.m. Eastern. Gets out to the 46-yard line, four yards shy of a first down. So again, Montana has forced third down and four, desperately needing to get the ball back to their offense. And they've contained the last two third downs in stopping Richmond. And Richmond's played it conservatively for the last quarter and a half. And now it's time you rely on your redshirt junior quarterback. You trust him, Mike London. Trust Eric Ward, his decision-making. 
see about two and a half minutes of clock here. In fact, Richmond 0 for 3 in the second half on third down. But a big play that could result in about two minutes of clock running. Four-man rush, and a man comes free. Jace Palmer stunted up the middle, and that forced Ward to get rid of it quickly. The game that Montana ran on that defensive line worked to perfection. And it stops the clock as well. That clock now finally important for the Grizzlies. And a creative line step. You're absolutely right. Good timing there between tackle and end. And Eric Ward a little bit in no man's land there. The ball, he did not know and was not decisive in his decision making there. He hesitated. And the ball floats aimlessly incomplete. Mariani makes a move. to the 21-yard line. And there's another flag there. What a difference that kickoff out of bounds makes, doesn't it? Those hidden yards and field position in the special teams phase of the game come back to hurt you. In the back by number seven of the receiver. Now more loss of yards. 10 yards. Phase of the game that Bobby Howe takes a lot of pride in. As you said, he is the special teams coach and coordinator. An area they have excelled and really taken advantage of many of their opponents, but tonight, missed field goal, kicks out of bounds, penalties on punts. Those well, vital yards have been negative for Montana, and Cole Berquist, he's got 10 minutes and 23 seconds to win a national championship. ESPN's College Football is presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. And in part by Phillips Norelco. Phillips, sense and simplicity. Montana scored a touchdown on their last drive, but it took 13 plays and 69 yards for them to go the difference. It was their distance. It was their first touchdown of the night. And their punter has been busy. Two long drives sandwiched between a lot of punts and what jumps out at you right now. You see two 69-yard drives. But now because, again, of errors in the special teams game, you're going to have to go 87 yards, a daunting task, with just 10 minutes left in this football game. Berquist flips it in the flat, and Reynolds. Crab crawls out to about the 15-yard line, cut down by Eric McBride. McBride was first team all-conference, or all-colonial conference this past year. Bergman led the team with 103 tackles coming into tonight. You do see a little bit of no huddle here. Not a rush, not a panic, but you certainly got to be up-tempo here if you're Montana offensively. Bergquist to Marianne. He's got it. First down to the 40-yard line. Protection, protection, protection. When Cole Bergquist and this offense has had it tonight, and he's had that space between he and that defensive line, and another nice, sharp route. Martin Marianne does a great job of turning Justin Rogers around there just with his body language and his body lean selling. The post route running to the corner, and how about that? 172 yards tonight for Mariani. Bergquist wants the home run again. Mariani cut down in the secondary. Jordan shoot one of the linebackers trying to stay back with Mariani. They got tangled. And no flag came out. A little surprise there at that contact that far down the field. And especially when the defender is lost in space, as it looked like Jordan Shoup was there. Not looking at the football, no, having no identification of where he's at on the field. The NFL, they typically call that an illegal contact. And I guess Mariani as well is fighting for the football. But when that defender is not looking back, more times than not, you get that call. Here comes the blitz. Berquist under pressure. He'll go down. Another sack for this Richmond defensive front. I think one thing that Cole Berquist, if he goes back and looks at this film after he graduates, 
he'll realize and what he's trying to do against that blitz is buy some time. He sets this blitz coming. You can see that. And what he's doing now is looking for a lane to run to instead of keeping his eyes down the field and trying to find an option. This defense is too fast for him. Those lanes are not open tonight. Credit Martin Parker with Richmond's seventh sack. Sets up third down and 12. Parker steps up, throws it behind the interceptor. Off the deflection, picked off. Down the sideline and out of bounds goes Eric McBride. The pass thrown behind Tyler Palmer. And there's the head coach, Mike London, all the way down to slap the helmet of his linebacker. When you play good zone defense, Bob, and you play sound fundamental football, and you sack the quarterback, look at the defense here having an understanding of their relationships within their zone coverage. They don't vacate their zone if there are tip balls. They take advantage. That's how you create 43 takeaways this season for Richmond. You play within the scheme. You trust that those tip balls are going to come. You play discipline, and you take advantage. Vaughn gets shut down. He lost a few. That's the 29th interception this season for the Richmond defense. Continually adding to a school record and the 14th interception in the last five games. And it's not rocket science. It's not gimmicky. They're not a blitz team. They're a team that plays a lot of seven guys in coverage. They'll give up some chunks here and there, as you've seen tonight. But they're going to trust each other that that tip ball will come, that they'll pressure the quarterback with their front four, and they'll capitalize on those turnovers. They're plus 24 this season. Ward will keep it. He's drilled. Lebsock makes the stop, but it'll be third down and long. Sean Lebsock, there is no quit in the kid from Billings, Montana. You see the brace on the elbow. He's battled through that injury this season. The last two collisions he has been a big part of. An all-academic, another kid that excels off the football field. Great job with his leverage. We saw DBs dive in at ankles. There you see a textbook tackle from the middle linebacker, dropping those hips, sinking those hips, and exploding through the tackle. Spoken like a true quarterback, right? Probably with the red jersey on. Third and 11. Ward under some pressure. Fires one over the middle, knocked away by Lebsock at the five yard line. What a series. What a series from the coach's son, Sean Lebsock. His brother played football here. His other brother plays fullback. His dad, the head coach, back there in Billings. His dad also was a star center for the Grizzlies. I love the perseverance, don't you? There's just no quit in these kids from Missoula. Now a field goal. Howard missed one earlier. Well, this is Brian Radford, the punter, who obviously has a little bit stronger leg than the place kicker, Andrew Howard. And Radford will try it from 39 yards away. That has plenty of distance. Good! What a huge play with 6.54 to go. Stretches the lead to three possessions. Let's take a look at tonight's Pontiac game-changing performance. Seven sacks tonight for Richmond and three of the seven by number two, Lawrence Sipper. Uh, when he's at the next level, he's not going to get to wear that single-digit number. He stands out tonight. Not many defensive ends in America wear number two. Not many defensive ends at this level combine the speed, the athleticism, the spin move, the multitude of dimensions. Been way too much tonight for Montana. They could sense it. Don't you just get the feeling that this crowd has been on their feet. You just sense the body language as that field goal sailed through the uprights. Six minutes away, a remarkable story for a private school, an academic institution like Richmond, a first-year head coach in Mike London to be this close to their first-ever national title. Squid kick trying to keep it away from Mariani. It ends up with Schulte. He's brought down at the 30-yard line. 
Capital One Bowl League kicks off on ESPN tomorrow. First at 11 a.m. Eastern. Butkus Award winner Aaron Curry and Wake Forest will take on the Navy Midshipmen in the Eagle Bank Bowl. Then at 8 Eastern, number 16 BYU and the Arizona Wildcats will meet in Las Vegas in the Pioneer of Las Vegas Bowl. Capital One Bowl League on ESPN tomorrow. Six minutes and 49 seconds away from Richmond winning the national championship. Montana will need a miracle comeback, and Burquist will go for the line ball. Incomplete, intended for Mariani. Got to be a little careful here about just chucking that ball 40 yards down the field. You've got three timeouts. In college football, that clock will stop after first downs. There are windows within this zone defense on in routes and curl routes and hook routes, but you better be right on the money because if you're not, as we've seen tonight, plus two in turnovers are Richmond, they will capitalize. Burquist has to come underneath. Tyler Palmer picks up a first down and gets out of bounds. Well, the job for the Spiders there was to make sure that Palmer, even if he picked up the first down, was brought down inbounds. Montana doing a nice job. That clock will start once they remark it. The, the rule change in college football this year. Bull's got to make sure he gets his guys to the line and get this ball snapped and salvage these precious seconds that are left. Quist shoots one to the sideline. That's good for a first down. And getting out of bounds is Steve Thaler. A gain of 12. This time tries to scramble and picks up four yards. Parker Miles on the stop, and that will roll the clock, so Montana has to hurry. Just too fast. That, that's what just jumps out tonight. Very, very fast defense. Undersized at times in the linebackers, but these defensive linemen, all of them, not just their very athletic defensive ends, the credit Martin Parker, Parker Miles in the middle of that defensive line, maintaining their integrity within the gaps. Cole Berkwist nowhere to run on those scrambles. Berkwist to the sideline. It's a man. A first down. Again, it's Failer. And that will stop the clock until they put the ball ready for play. Montana has to hurry. That last play took 30 seconds to get the call in from the sideline, lined up and go. 10 seconds on the play clock by the time they finally snapped the ball. Five minutes remaining. Here comes the blitz. Dropping it over the middle is Mariani. Well, he hasn't done anything wrong tonight until now. Interesting statistic again speaking to the value of turnovers. Richmond is here. They've won eight games in a row largely by a very active defense that's capitalized on other teams' mistakes. They played conservative second half. They've let this clock run. They've bled the clock offensively. Smell on the championship now. Short gain to Palmer. Four yards. And the four yards that they picked up almost not worth the time that's going to come off the clock because of it. This team tackles well, don't they? We've seen a lot of college football this season. One thing about Richmond and this staff and what they've done defensively, their motto is to fly to the football, to get a lot of color to the football. And tonight, you've seen that to perfection. Bergquist 
running for his life again. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage, and now it's fourth down. Sid Berry again in on the stop. But be very careful here if you rob Fennessy and Bobby Howe to make sure you get to the right fourth down call. Sidberry's motor has not stopped at all. You saw him chase down a defender earlier on the pass play. Relentless in his effort tonight. Turns it over on downs. Parker knocks it down. It really doesn't matter, Bob, what level of football you play, whether it's Pop Warner, whether it's junior high, whether it's high school, collegiately, professionally. You look at the best teams right now in the NFL, and there's one thing that will jump out with all of those teams. When you have a dominant group up front, when your front four can control the line of scrimmage and dictate to an offense, as much as turnovers, you give yourself an incredible chance to win. And tonight, what a dominant effort up front by the Spiders. Some laughs on the sideline. Martin Parker trying to get up on a chair to celebrate with the crowd. Ouch. <laughs> I'm sure they love you too. Just stay seated. <laughs> Montana sells out to try and stop Vaughn, and they can't do it. Vaughn down the sideline. Defensive line exerting their will tonight for Richmond. A great job again by the offensive line. Remember a long time ago, Bob, at the beginning of this game, I think one of the first drives you asked about the play up front and how much of a role and a correlation it will play to the outcome. And I think the statement has been made a physical, not your spread, not your new age football. Mike Ferragalli and his staff call this the East Coast system. Again, let's take a look at our Coke Zero game track. And this East Coast system has scored 24 points and hasn't had to do much in the second half. But they're going to play physical football. They're going to establish at the point of attack. And they're going to bring a championship back home to Richmond. A little over two minutes remaining before Richmond is crowned as a national champion. Mike London in his first year back at his alma mater as the head coach at Richmond about to deliver the Spiders the first national championship in a team sport in school history. Two minutes and 11 seconds to go. Quarterback draw for Ward. He's got a first down. London is such an inspirational guy. An 83 grad of Richmond. Graduated with a sociology degree. Spent one year with the Dallas Cowboys, but then came back to Richmond and graduated from the Richmond Police Academy and was a detective in the street crimes unit in Richmond. But most inspirational was what he did for his 13-year-old daughter, Tyson, who at the time, five and a half years ago, she's now 13, thank God, she was diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder that weakens the immune system and leaves victims susceptible to cancer. Part of the treatment was a bone marrow transplant. And you can see on the left in pink there is Tyson, the donor of that bone marrow transplant was Mike London. So he saved his daughter's life. 
He has gone on to have a magnificent career as an assistant coach primarily. Not only in the NFL for a year with the Houston Texans, but six out of the last seven years with the University of Virginia, primarily on Al Groh's staff. And now in his first season as the head coach at Richmond with his alma mater, he's one minute and 23 seconds away from a national championship. And Mike London is well-traveled, as many head coaches of college football are. Not only did he spend time as the linebackers coach for Richmond from 1988 to 1989, but he came back from 94 through 96 as an assistant at Richmond, also at William & Mary at Boston College with the Houston Texans in the NFL. Most of the last seven years at the University of Virginia. And obviously as a police detective on the street crimes unit, this is a man that doesn't get talked back to often by his player. Sports Center follows as soon as we're done. The NCAA Division I Football Championship on ESPN presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. My partner Brock Ewart is down on the field now getting a different perspective and I'm sure we'll have a moment to spend with Mike London as soon as this title is consummated and Brock just talking about what a great man Mike London is you feel bad for Bobby Howe because that coaching staff from Montana is about a good a group of guys as you can hope for but you can't help but feel good for Mike London and when you talked to Bobby Howe yesterday he said it was awfully difficult <laughs> in some ways to prepare for such a classy team as Richmond. Just great people from Mike London all the way through their staff. We felt it with their fans, their athletic department, and a school that's obviously hungry. I think would be understating 170 plus years of existence. And now your first national championship. great Bob when he said yesterday to us pressure you call this people ask me is this pressure now being a an undercover detective that's pressure giving bone marrow to my daughter that's pressure this this is a release coaching this group of guys with the staff I have around me could not ask for more on well, the 40th anniversary year of maybe the greatest win in Richmond football history when they beat 17th ranked Ohio in the Tangerine Bowl back in 1968. They have risen back up to win their first national championship. Buster O'Brien was the hero of that Tangerine Bowl win. Threw for three touchdowns, 447 yards. What a performance Mike London got out of Eric Ward as quarterback tonight. The Spiders are the national champions. tonight for Lawrence Sidbury and on defense for either team he was certainly the player of the game multiple pressures on the quarterbacks for Montana seven sacks as a team tonight for Richmond and three go to Sidbury and Richmond celebrates the first national championship in school history in any team sport what a road it was to the final as well Comeback wins in the second half against Appalachian State. Two touchdowns in the fourth quarter against Northern Iowa to win 21 to 20 last week. Both of those wins coming on the road. They fought their way to Chattanooga and they win the national title. 
and a wonderful year for Montana as well. But Mike London is the victorious head coach, and he's with Brock Ewart. Well, Coach, you're a little wet, but would you have ever imagined when you donned this uniform a number of years ago as a player, your first year coaching here, how do you feel? I tell you, I just praise God for this opportunity. You couldn't write a better script than this. First year head coach at alma mater. I had those off to all the players and the coaches. Dr. Ayers, administration, professors, teachers, the community. We brought one home for Richmond. Stop spiders play for you. You told us yesterday, pressure, pressure's being an undercover cop. Pressure's donating my bone marrow to my daughter. This, this is a release. This is nothing compared to that. And it just, uh, what, a, what an awesome, awesome game, awesome opportunity for the University of Richmond and all the players and parents. I, I just, I don't have words to describe this. I'm just, I, I just can't describe how I feel right now. Well, tell me about Lord Sidbury. You, you told us yesterday as quality a student athlete as you're going to find in college football. How about him tonight? Well, I tell you what. If anybody had doubts about him playing in the NFL, I think he, he quieted those doubts. Uh, what a great young man he is. All these all these guys, great young men that just laid, laid it out on the field right there. I mean, they just, that's, that's my team right there. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be the head coach of this team. Well, 178 years worth. 178 years. Go celebrate with your team and your university. Congratulations. Bob, back to you. All right, Brock, 24-7 is our final. Richmond wins the national championship over Montana. What a tournament it was, and what a run it was for the Richmond Spiders. For more on tonight's game, you can tune into ESPN News for a post-game extra. For Brock Ewart, I'm Bob Oshusen saying so long from Chattanooga, Tennessee. This has been an ESPN presentation, the worldwide leader in sports. Congratulations to the Richmond Spiders, the national champions, 24 to 7. They win it and bathe Mike London. Now let's join Neil Everett and Linda Cohn for SportsCenter.